nerves, folks. Uh, they were jangling a bit, especially when we got in front. There was about a minute to go, and I thought, we've just got to kill the clock here. Um, I thought our blokes actually did a brilliant job of just, you know, forcing stoppage after stoppage and surging the ball forward. I, they played that little snippet of the game with a, with a great deal of intelligence. Uh, I was pretty pleased. I think it was, did McIntosh have the ball at the end down? Some original player had the ball. Yeah, he did. I think, don't take off, but he didn't take off, and the clock kept ticking, and... It's time to celebrate. So it was a uh, it was a brilliant game of football. Um, probably they didn't, the Richmond didn't deserve to lose, and neither did we. Um, it was a you know the AFL would have to be happy with that as their first final. Uh, there's not many better games of football that I've ever been involved in. And Joe Danaher, I mean, he's quite last year's finals, but then he bobs up with two goals in the fourth quarter and just does Joe do what Joe does. Yeah, there were times when he was a bit of a villain and then then he was the hero in the end. Uh, really pleased for him. That's what we got him to the club for, for those those big moments. And um, he delivered tonight when it mattered. Um, and he and you know Dan McStay had to share the ruck duties after Oscar got injured, in particular Dan, you know, who played 80% of the game in the ruck. Uh, he was enormous for us tonight. Speaking of blokes who delivered, Lockie Neal, that was a, a final performance for the ages too, wasn't it? It was 39. Yeah. Yeah. 30, almost 40 and 15 clearances. It was how he did it though, like he's so clean and you know it was a high pressure, fast paced game and his ability to you know collect the ball cleanly and give it to his teammates was um, was outstanding. Yeah, it was one of the great finals games you'll ever see. What was your view of the, that last Tom Lynch kick at goal where it went over the top of the post? Did, what, did you have much of a view on it? At no, all I, was sort of, I was sort of watching it on the screen trying to work out what they'd say. And I didn't really know what would come up. Uh, I was pretty relieved when there was a point and there was still a chance for us. So uh, it was a game like that. Um, swings and roundabouts, um, moments. So. What's your overriding emotion, Craig? We have, we've heard the record all week. You said yesterday the way to quiet it was with the win. Mm. Like, how do you feel? And, and obviously the way it unfolded. Yeah, yeah. Well, probably... Uh, in a way, I, look, it, I, you know, we want to win more finals. We're not going to get carried away with ourselves tonight and give ourselves a pat on the back. But it, if, it, if ever there was a way to win a final and you wanted to show that you were made of the right stuff, um, I think tonight we showed that. Um, you know, we we looked probably gone a few times, and our players could easily have, um, you know, got disappointed with the the Oscar injury so so early in the game. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty massive. Low. He's an important player to us, and for our guys, just to <clears throat> you know, we lost Dan McStay early in the first final last year, and I felt like that affected us mentally. Um, and it was something that we talked about during the pre-season. And tonight, that didn't affect us mentally. The boys kept playing, and uh, I like that about our effort because finals it often comes down to what's going on in your mind, your mindset to hang in there, um, even when things aren't going well. And uh, we did that. So I'm, I'm really proud of our group tonight. It's a, it's a step forward in our development. So a win like that, what does it do for the confidence that was probably already there, but you know, you're moving on another week now? So. Yeah, uh, well, it should do a fair bit for the confidence, um, you would think. Um, but, you know, I don't know who will play next week. It could be Melbourne again or it could be, could be Sydney in Sydney. So... Um, We'll probably just try and enjoy tonight and not think about it too much, watch the game tomorrow night. But it, it should give us a little bit of momentum because we sort of lost... I felt like we had momentum coming into the to the Melbourne game a couple of weeks ago and then we had a, a bad night and I felt like all that momentum that we'd started to build suddenly disappeared. So it's good to get it back. Um, hopefully we can ride it. And young, uh, young Darcy had a good game for his first game. Yeah, look, <clears throat> it's interesting. I, um, <laughs> I thought, oh, well, if... Even if we lost tonight, this thought went through my head, we've, we've found a player. Um, for him to pl make his debut and to, to come out and, and play like that and have some pretty good moments um, speaks volumes for him. And, and um, yeah, I'm hopefully he'll be a Brisbane Lions player for a long, long time. And your other big decision, I guess, was to bring in De uh, Dev Robertson. Can you tell us, I guess, why you brought him in and what you thought of his performance? Because you gave him a big couple of big jobs tonight. Yeah, well firstly we brought him in because Jared Lyons has got sore groin so we needed another midfielder and I just felt like Dev could do a really good job tagging. I mean he's a dogged competitor 
he, and he's got a good tank. And uh, you know, he had the task on Prestia before Prestia was injured, and then then went to Cochin after that. So um, I thought he did a great job. Um, he's, he's a high quality human being, Dev Robertson, and I was pretty sure he'd, he'd get it done. And I'm really pleased for him that he was able to. Chris, does uh, McInerney's unfortunate situation present an opportunity for Port uh, for a rough perspective? Yes, I've, I've thanked our <coughs> recruiting manager just then after the game for getting Darcy Ford to the club uh, last year because we're certainly going to need him um, next week. Oscar, it was pretty clear, as soon as I looked at him, I thought, oh, he's, he's in a bit of trouble here. Um, so, yes, Darcy Darcy won't play in the reserves this weekend. We'll keep him in cotton wool and playing next week. Chris, um, Cameron had, I think he kicked three and had a couple of nice assists, but... Have you ever seen him work so hard off the ball, like all that pressure? Yeah, no, up there? Oh, yeah. Look, he, he was great tonight. I, I think he's taken his pressure game to another level um, this year. I think he's he, and he's been pretty good all year with it. Um, and that's probably a part of his game that was inconsistent, but it's become consistent, and that makes him a more complete small forward. Um, but he, he energised us tonight. So that, it was good. We had, you know we had ten goal kickers, which was great. So that was probably the knock last week, just the pressure. Trapping it in, do you think you've set the, the benchmark now if you want to continue with that sort of... Yeah, yeah, maybe, although it was a high scoring game tonight, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, you know, the, all the people that um, are, big, are keen on team defence wouldn't be uh, too happy with the, the result tonight, but I think the fans and everybody who watched the game probably pretty happy that a game like that was played and both teams kicked a hundred, over 100 points. Well, that we, we first and second on points four anyway, aren't we? So it probably, probably went to script. Just get kicking more points. Goals, I guess, yeah. yeah. And um, I guess it's something you'll worry about in a, in a week or in a few days' time. But you've got to try and find room for two guys that were suspended. That would mm. be a, a difficult decision, I guess, but one you obviously should sort of relish having. Yeah, it's a nice problem to have. Um, both those boys can bring something to the team, so uh, I haven't given that much thought how that all works. But um, yeah, we've got a little bit of time to to work that out. A massive week, Chris. Will you fly down to Melbourne tomorrow to watch tomorrow night's game, obviously, given next week's review? No, I'll, I probably won't. I'll watch it on TV, I reckon, mate. And we get all the angles anyway, so uh, I think I'll just stay here and try and stay away from planes and airports where you might catch COVID. So, uh, um, no, I'll, yeah, watch it on the, on the vision. Thanks, everyone. Great, Thanks, Thank you. Cheers. Thanks,